Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Voices of Forestry podcast. I'm your host, Seth Stevenson, the Communications Coordinator with the Arkansas Forestry Association. And today we are talking about the topic of forests and drinking water. But before we hop into that, I want to give a special shout out and a thank you to our sponsor this month, Potlatch Deltic. We're going to hear a little bit more from them later on in this episode. But for now, I am joined by Joy Wasson, the coordinator of the Arkansas Forest and Drinking Water Collaborative. She's going to be here with us talking about the relationship between forests and drinking water and what exactly all that means. So Joy, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know this is a topic we've been wanting to talk about for a hot minute now. Um, so I'm glad that you were able to, we were able to get you down here to, uh, to on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so Joy, as always, uh, I kind of gave you a heads up here. This wasn't one of the questions I sent you, but one of the things we like to do for new guests is to give you a chance to tell people who you are, your background in the field of forestry, if that even is your field. I know we're kind of in a weird spot today where you've got drinking water and forest and they work together very closely now, but they were at one point two separate camps. Um, so can you just tell people what your background is? Yes. Um, so I would like to start, I just, I grew up in the Ozark Mountains um, and my passion has always been in river conservation. So I come at this, my background is environmental science and I also have a degree in business and economics. And I spent about 16 years working in the conservation field for the Nature Conservancy. Um, it was at that time that I met Joe Fox and worked with him for seven or eight years and he taught me uh, probably most of what I know about forestry, including conservation forestry. I also um, worked alongside uh, my colleagues that did prescribed fire. And so even though my background is in aquatics, um, I got a really good uh, introduction and mm -hmm. education in forestry through working at the Nature Conservancy. Um, in about February of 2021, I started working for this group, the Arkansas okay. Forest and Drinking Water Collaborative. And um, yeah, so that's my background. Um, and uh, I would say that um, most of my work in river conservation was doing assessments of rivers and uh, restoration work of rivers. Okay. And uh, in that work, I learned... Uh, firsthand how important healthy forests were. Mm -hmm. It's the roots in the ground that holds the banks of the rivers together. And when we did restoration, we put a lot of effort into uh, getting those roots in the ground. That was our insurance for mm -hmm. the project. And so um, I learned a lot at that time about how to um, uh, plant these in riparian zones and uh, ensure their success. And in that time, we worked with landowners that were interested in protecting their river corridors. And um, I found that there was um, a lot of hurdles uh, to getting a healthy forest back once it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and hey, Joe Fox, he's he's the guy. If you're going to learn anything about forestry in Arkansas, <laughs> he's the guy to learn it from for sure. So Agreed. Uh, you had an excellent start into <laughs> into the field of forestry. Uh, but Joy, I guess, you know, you, you st you're here working with the coalition here in the past couple of years, but this group actually started back in, correct me if I'm wrong, 2015. Is that right? That's correct. So, so can you give us just a little bit of history about the coalition itself? I would love to. Um, so this group started in May of 2015, um, and it was started with a uh, forum, a, a forest and drinking water forum. Mm -hmm. And it was probably the first time that the forest and drinking water sectors uh, joined and began conversating about how to protect our drinking water going forward. Um, from that, we had a robust group uh, that continued to this day to collaborate, to conversate, to find the intersection between the two sectors and how they could begin working together. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, uh, many other southern states are trying to mimic what we've put together. So a little bit leading the charge there as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and like everyone else, has had minor setbacks in meeting because of COVID, but mm -hmm. we're back. We've just finished our... Um, biennial conference um, last week and we uh, met in person again mm -hmm. and um, we 
are looking forward to what we can do going forward. So I guess we should probably address this a little bit too, is that the forest folk and the drinking water folk never, they, they didn't always see eye to eye, correct? There well, was I'd always say, a bit you know, they have their day-to-day -day work and mm -hmm. operations of which they didn't really see intersecting with each other, mm -hmm. although they're inextricably linked. Yes, yeah. And so once the conversations began, it really sparked an interest in learning about the other sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know because Max and I have been talking, that's kind of, been the big development here over the past couple of years is this collaboration, this collaborative, if you will, of, of working together and realizing how how one depends on the other, so to speak. That's right. And at this conference that we had, we also brought in the University of Arkansas, Arkansas Water Resource Center, mm -hmm. and they brought the research aspect to it. So it was kind of a three-part conference that we collaborated together where we looked at First, the research, the hard research mm -hmm. on harmful algal blooms. And we transitioned to our drinking water sector where we looked at how does that actually translate into treating the drinking water, you know, understanding the research behind it. Mm -hmm. And then um, how can we uh, bolster our forest in order to uh, address those topics? Okay. Now, if you could, who are some of the other partners in the coalition or in the collaborative? So we have 22 uh, partners, mm -hmm. and these include water utilities, the forest industry, of course, mm -hmm. um, state and federal agencies, and nonprofit and conservation associations. Okay. So it's a mix. Okay. It's I mean, and that's good because I would imagine each of them brings their own special flair. Absolutely. To the table. That's right, and it makes for a more robust conversation about how do we actually bolster the healthy forests that we have mm -hmm. and restore the ones that need restoring. And this has always been something that we've, we, we like to touch on, especially here in the state of Arkansas, is stuff like this is a team effort. Everyone is very willing to work together. Everyone is very willing to come, come to a centralized table to discuss what we can do to better I mean, the forest and drinking water now. Um, so that that's nice to hear that that's still still the case as we kind of leave the field of forestry just a smidge <laughs> into the world of drinking water. Yeah, I mean, 61% of all Arkansans drink water that originates in forested watersheds. Um, I think that's a fantastic number. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. So we know that maintaining these healthy forests is the best protection we can provide Absolutely. for our drinking water going forward. Absolutely. Now, do you know if that number is the same or, or similar in other states, or is that uh, is that kind of unique to Arkansas? You know, I don't know the okay. answer to that, but my gut tells me that we are unique in that. Okay, cool. Awesome. Not only are we unique in the forested landscape that we have, mm -hmm. um, but we are unique in that we get an incredible amount of annual rainfall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on average 52 to 54 inches of rain a year, we're a very um, water rich state. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need those forests to filter out that water for us so that we can drink it. Okay. And so that kind of moves us into my next question for you, Joy, is if you could, can you explain the connection between a working forest and clean water? I guess specifically drinking water in this case. So forest, you know, not only do they purify our air for us to breathe, but they equally filter our water in order for us to drink. And so when we have a high amount of sediment in the water mm -hmm. that normally we have to use clarifiers to remove in order for us to drink, um, the tree roots uh, will do that for us. So when those trees are removed from our floodplains, we lose that ability to filter the water. Oh, okay. Wow. So we like to say that healthy, that healthy drinking water grows on trees. Okay. No, <laughs> hey, that's awesome. That's great. It's almost like, you know, I, this is probably a dumb way to simplize it, but it's almost as if the trees are just a big Brita filter. Is that a correct? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, yes. Cool. Cool. I mean, we, the roots in the ground are what provide the stability for our stream banks, but also it 
sucks the water. It mm -hmm. sucks the water up. It filters it out as it flows downstream. And so what it does is it provides resiliency to disturbance. So if anything is uh, occurring uh, that upstream, say, mm -hmm. that is a disturbance to the rivers or the lakes that give us our mm -hmm. drinking water, um, the forest and the trees actually create a buffer uh, for that disturbance. Okay. So not only does it um, provide you know, healthy water and healthy air, it's a buffer for anything that we might create on the landscape that disturbs that. Okay, interesting. So I guess in this, this you might have already answered this, but I want to ask it anyways. How does active forest management play a role in making sure that we have this good, healthy drinking water? Yes. So, you know, there are, our healthy water really depends on forest landowners. And a lot of those are private. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm learning about forestry methods is that um, landowners have different goals for their land. They may be growing timber for particular reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the management that occurs does one main thing, and that's help the landowners reach their goals while also maintaining healthy forest and drinking water. And so sometimes it's not clear how those align. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it, it's really great that we're in an era now where science shows us that we can still get returns on our forest as forest landowners mm -hmm. and maintain healthy drinking water at the same time. Awesome. That's awesome. So it's kind of like a, a little double-edged sword in a good way or a, a two-for-one deal where you're also you're, a landowner is managing for what they want but also providing drinking water to not only their family but the families all around in the area. That's right. And a great example of that are forest management zones, mm -hmm. uh, streamside management zones. And so um, this is where I see a lot of synergy between our two groups, our two main sectors, the drinking water sector and the forest sector. Mm -hmm. They're both in their respective work trying to maintain healthy forest in floodplains and streamside corridors. That's probably one management technique that overarching uh, accomplishes both mm -hmm. sectors' goals. So um, that would be one management technique, mm -hmm. and that's what we really started to focus on, on where can we work together. Mm -hmm. The drinking water sector is looking at how do we implement source water protection in our watersheds so that the water that's coming at us is in better shape for us to, you know, treat yeah and uh and so what we're doing is going forward and this is probably another question that you might have what are the projects going forward mm -hmm. you know to this point we've really done a lot of work on understanding the other sectors communicating what our roles and responsibilities are and now we're really ready to start doing projects together okay and so um, stream side corridors, forested corridors, is an, a clear intersection where these two groups can work together. So that's that's going to be our next step, and I'm excited to talk about that too. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we hop into that, Joy, let's take a quick break, and we're going to hear a little bit more from our our sponsors this month, Potlatch Deltic. At Potlatch Deltic, we know Arkansas, our forest, our land, and our people. We are here in Arkansas every day sustainably managing timberland, producing lumber, developing Chanel properties, neighborhoods, and selling recreational real estate. If you're interested in having a place of your own for hunting, hiking, fishing, or just relaxing, visit our website at potlatchdelticlandsales.com. Thank you once again to Potlatch Deltic for their support of the show. So Joy, before the break, you mentioned some of the projects that you were or that you guys are, are have coming up. But before we do that, one thing I thought we might want to do is just exactly define what a streamside corridor is. Because to be quite frank, I'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> what it is, but I think it'll give people a good opportunity to kind of imagine what 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 that is, or if they go out into the woods and they see they see that they can identify that as 
a stream side corridor. So could you just give us a quick definition of that? Yes. So the stream side corridor, any lakes or rivers, let's take lakes, for instance, mm-hmm. lakes are fed by rivers. And so the most important part of for in terms of water quality of the forest intersection with water is this corridor that follows along a stream side area or a lake surface. Mm-hmm. And so those vary in widths and lengths, um, but it also coincides with the word floodplain. Okay. So if you think about as rivers rise after a rain, they get bigger and they fill a certain area that is often... Um, it's often full of water. Mm -hmm. So it may Mm -hmm. recede, it may come back. Um, Landowners will know where that is on their own property because they watch it over Mm -hmm. time. Um, So it's this area that's most crucial to have those roots in the ground. When the roots are taken out, then you have the likelihood of further erosion and sedimentation. And so while the whole forest being healthy is important, these streamside corridors are, say, the hot spots. Mm-hmm. Okay. The and highest I, priority. Okay. And, and I know um, landowners probably know a lot of this because here in Arkansas specifically, they probably follow our best management practices, which we have an episode on that if you want to go back and listen to it. Uh, but I know one of the one of the for some reason, one of the acronyms that I've committed to memory, SMZs or streamside management zones, also kind of help with the healthy drinking water. And you said that there's riparian. The last two words are escaping me. What, what was it again? Riparian reforestation. Reforestation. So that those are kind of one in the same almost. They are. Okay. Yeah. It's just different terms used by different industries. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yes, streamside management zones are those best management practices put forth by the forest industry Um, that gives great guidelines on how landowners can identify those areas and make sure to avoid those areas when possible. And then when not possible, you know, how do we cross these creeks and Mm -hmm. rivers in a responsible way? And so those best management practices are really key to maintaining good water quality when you go in and do things like timber thinnings Mm -hmm. or, um, or even clear cuts. These areas are, you know, the most important to pay attention to with regards to water quality. And now this may go without asking, but when you guys are, are working with, I guess maybe this would be a more specific question for someone like Central Arkansas Water who works closely here in the Little Rock area, but I guess people like that are using the best management practices to manage the forest around their lakes and rivers, right? If they know to do so, okay, okay. I think in general, most Arkansans want to do the right thing and maintain healthy, clean water Mm -hmm. and and also keep their land from eroding if they're doing these practices on their own um, ranches or farms or things like that. Um, And so what is uh, really important with organizations like you all, the Forestry Mm -hmm. Association, is being able to communicate that to the landowners prior to some project or work they may do on their property. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of projects, let's hop into, uh, again, what you kind of teased at the top of the top of the show. What are some of the projects that you guys have coming up? What are some of the things that the collaborative is looking at moving forward? Okay. So we have been talking about this for the last year and we have an incredible list of partners put together and we're continuing to add those partners. So I would love Mm. for any forest uh, industries that are listening that want to be a part of this to jump on in. Um, And we're calling it the Arkansas Community Program. Okay. And what this is, is um, it's a collaboration with Central Arkansas Water, Beaver Water District, and Conway Corporation. These are three of our largest water utilities in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, They're all three working on source water protection in one way or another. Beaver Water District, Central Arkansas Water have a pretty established and well-funded source water protection program through a watershed fee that they um, administer to their customers. Um, Conway Corps is on their way to developing one, and uh, their uh, source of water is Lake Brewer. So 
we, as I said, the synergy between our groups is really looking at these streamside and lakeside corridors and how can we make the forested areas in these places mm -hmm. robust, protected, or restored where, where that's needed. Okay. And so one way that we're looking at this is this project will basically build a riparian tree bank. And so we're going to take the uh, seedlings from the forestry, almost said forestry commission. <laughs> <laughs> that, which isn't technically incorrect, but the forestry division. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. the forestry <laughs> division, who grows this incredible source of um, hardwood seedlings. And um, we're going to take those seedlings and we're going to grow those in pots for a period of time to make them a little bit more robust mm -hmm. for streamside areas. Um, particularly in, in uh, higher sloped areas like the Ozark and Washita Mountains. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at replanting along streamside corridors, um, we need pretty established roots to withstand the floods that are to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to take most of what we have done in the past when we help landowners reforest these areas is we order these trees from out of state and we ship them in. It, increasing the cost and the likelihood for their stress. Mm -hmm. And so what better an idea than to take a locally sourced grown set of seedlings and make them into potted trees. And then we're going to uh, supply these to landowners who are wanting to reforest their streamside management zones. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I guess how long do you guys, or is this just an ongoing thing that you guys are going to be doing or does it have kind of like a set begins this date, ends this date, or have you gotten that far yet? So initially we're looking at an 18 month project. Okay. Um, and we have a few leads on uh, good sources of funding to help us get that started. Mm -hmm. um, these water utilities are gonna be host sites for growing these trees. Um, and then we've got a really great group of um, volunteers that are gonna help us, mostly master naturalist groups okay. from the Northwest Arkansas, the Foothills Master Naturalist in Central Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And they're going to help us grow these seedlings into um, strong native trees that we can then um, provide these cost-free to, like I said, landowners. And we're going to target these in drinking water watersheds. Okay. So, uh, you know, it'll be a statewide thing, mm -hmm. but considering we're working with these three utilities, we'll probably try to identify landowners in these particular watersheds um, initially. Okay, all right. And, and I'm, I'm assuming uh, when this actually happens, we will provide some more information. AFA will provide some more information to landowners who are interested in maybe reaching out to you guys to become a part of this project. Absolutely. This is one way to try to get the word out, um, but also our group of members. We have 160 people currently in okay. our group mm -hmm. on our email list. We would like that to grow. <laughs> um, but these are professionals working on the landscape, a lot of them. And mm -hmm. so in conservation or in the utility industry or in the forest industry, who are regularly interacting with landowners. And so what we want to do is tap into that network mm -hmm. and find the best possible places that we can put these in the ground. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, I guess, Joy, kind of moving forward, it sounds like you've answered the, my next question, but um, partnerships seem to be a pretty big part of what you guys are doing because you're working with the forestry division to help get these seedlings to help with this project going forward and you're working with central arkansas water beaver watershed conway corp i guess is there anything else any positive results that you guys have seen from partnerships like these uh with the collaborative yes i would like to highlight one mm -hmm. that i've just personally watched over the last year as i've been you know educating myself uh, mm -hmm. better on uh on how we can uh, collaborate between our groups and that's, um, I've been sitting in with Conway Corps. They have a monthly water quality meeting. Mm -hmm. And they've been working with UCA to uh, do some research on how they can address taste and odor issues that are associated with harmful algal blooms in Lake Brewer. And what's going on in the watershed that they might be able to address to mitigate that as well. So mm -hmm. not just treating it once they're um, receiving the water, but what can we do in the watershed? And... It's a real interesting intersection because you're taking 
heavy research, which <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I can communicate what that is, but what I do know <laughs> mm -hmm. after listening a lot to researchers talk about harmful algal blooms is there's a lot of things we don't know. Okay. And one of these things that shows up, though, is taste and odor issues. Mm -hmm. And that's what prompted Conway Corps to begin this research and how, trying to translate that into monitoring and management of their drinking water. And so it's been fascinating to watch. You have people from, you know, the managers that actually treat the water to the researchers and intern students and things that, you know, people that are collecting and mm -hmm. analyzing um, these harmful algal blooms and water quality. And then you've got engineers that are looking at, you know, the mechanical side of water treatment. Mm -hmm. All various different backgrounds brought together by simply complaints of taste and odor issues. Hmm. And that associ is associated with you know, when the lake turns over and, and various times of the year, but, um, just being a fly on the wall mm -hmm. and listening to their conversations and how they're actually tweaking their management and what they do month to month based on these conversations that they're having, that shows me that when we start collaborating together, um, between our industries, we really take these large leaps forward mm -hmm. in, are addressing the issue yeah if that makes sense no for sure and you know to 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 that you know the forestry folks can can do a lot so can the water conservation folks but i mean like you said when we come together we can really make some cause some damage if you will uh in solving some problems you know so it, it's good to hear i i never would have thought and this probably was dumb of me but i never would have thought that uca would have been involved or gotten involved with stuff like that, but I guess they do help a lot with research and getting some of that data to you guys. Yes, and it's really interesting. We had a panel discussion um, with the water utilities and UCA participated with Conway Corps at our conference, and it was interesting. I think I asked them the question, what has this partnership um, developed for each of you? Mm -hmm. You know, they've been working together for over a year, maybe two, I'm not sure. And on this effort. And um, Conway Corps mentioned that having the uh, U University of Central Arkansas involved and going out and doing water samples and private properties, you know, the, the landowners were much more likely and receptive to see uh, UCA out there mm -hmm. and students involved. And that opened the door for them to be able to sample in more areas. Um, whereas they felt like if they were just Conway Corps coming and knocking on the door, um, they wouldn't have had a, as good of a reception. Yeah. And so that was interesting yeah. to me. Um, and, you know, just another example of how when we bring partners in to fill in the gaps of skill sets or areas that, uh, you know, we need to investigate, mm -hmm. it, it produces a collaborative effort with a well rounded better approach and results and i guess and that's i mean you're called the arkansas forest and drinking water collaborative so but i guess that's ultimately the main goal or the main mission of of your group right so our mission is we are trying to facilitate conservation and better management of forested watersheds in arkansas for the reason of protecting public water supply so in other words, we want to keep forest as forest mm -hmm. because we know what they provide for our clean drinking water. And we do this by three main strategies. So we want to su first support and strengthen the communication between these sectors. Then we want to increase the collaboration between these sectors. And ultimately, we want to facilitate the development of local programs and projects. So most of these last seven years, we've been working on the first two strategies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we're really rolling and we're ready to start doing projects together. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Joy, I guess, is there a website that you guys have that if people are interested in maybe reaching out to you or getting some more information about what you guys are doing, uh, where can they go? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> ARForestAndWater.com. We'll make sure we have a link to their website in the description of this episode. So if you guys are interested in seeing what else they got going on, you can click that link and it'll take you straight to where you need to be. So, Joy, as we kind of wrap up here, 
one of the things that I wanted to ask, um, in, in your opinion, in your own words, why exactly is it important for people, not only people in the forestry industry or in the forestry world or in the drinking water world or uh, water conservation world, why is it important for people to understand the connection between forest and drinking water? Oh, well, that's at the heart of what we're doing, right? It's important because all people care about their drinking water. And we want to know that we're, that's going to be provided for our generations to come. And so one of the best ways that we can do that is using what Mother Nature has given us, and that's healthy forest to filter out the water and to filter out our air. And so really the heart of what we're doing in this group is we're bringing the two most important sectors together to address that. Those that are making our forests healthy and those that are cleaning the water that we drink. It's interesting that we haven't had a strong connection between these two sectors mm -hmm. until we started looking at this, but now we're here and we're rolling. So it's, um, it's a good time for Arkansas. Awesome. That's that's good to hear. Being an Arkansan myself, uh, you know, that's, that's excellent to hear. Well, Joy, is there anything else that you want to add or you'd like to say before we wrap this up? There is one more thing I want to add about this community program. So not only are we going to provide uh, these cost-free trees to riparian landowners, um, but we also want to give them technical and financial assistance um, to prep their sites, to plant these trees, and to provide the care, especially during that first year of growth um, as these trees are getting established. Thank you for having me. Yeah. One, of, um, one of the biggest things that we're trying to do right now is just get the word out mm -hmm. um, and, and, and synergize this energy that we have towards working together and getting more people involved. And so if you go to our website, if you become a member, um, if you care about forest or drinking water, this is this place is for you. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, if you aren't clued into our group, um, we try to meet quarterly and we have a conference every two years. And we're always doing landowner outreach. So please get in touch with me or anyone in our organization to um, learn more and get more involved. Okay. Well, I'm sure this is not the last time you guys are going to hear from Joy or the collaborative here on this show. We've only, excuse my, uh, excuse my verbiage here, but we've only seen a drop in the bucket of, <laughs> of this, con you know, of this partnership between forest and drinking water. So I'm sure we'll have her back on. Uh, but Joy, yeah, I, I want to say thank you so much. I know I kind of caught you on the tail end of that uh, annual meet or biennial meeting. Meeting, so I want to thank you for working with me. And hopefully, I wasn't too uh, too antsy to try to get you on the show this this month. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here and meet you. And I'll come back anytime. Thanks awesome. for having me. Awesome. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us this month as well. Uh, as always, we want to give a special shout out and a thank you to Rob McCormick slash some guy named Rob for the use of our theme song, The Same Love. That's off of his album, The Folkster. You can find more of his music on Spotify. And as always, we'll have a link to his website in the description of this episode. We also want to give a special thank you to our sponsors this month, Potlatch Deltic. Thank you to them once again for sponsoring this month's episode. And I did this last month, but I want to do it again. If you haven't uh, rated or reviewed us on any of the platforms you listen to us on, please do so. We kind of would like the feedback. We want to make sure we're doing things correctly and making sure we're not missing any topics that you guys want to hear about. So go rate and review us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. If there's a way to do so, please do it. And as always, if you want more information on the Arkansas Forestry Association, you can find us at arcforest.org. That's A-R-K-F-O-R-E-S-T-S dot org. Well, join us next month when we'll have a new topic, a new discussion, and a new voice of forestry.